So I'm here with a new guest today. Anya is an incredible, uh, I'm going to call it Cooking with Plants because that's sort of her, her title. But she is an incredible vegan and she's come up with some fantastic recipes. Uh, we're really happy to have her on the show today and talk about uh, cooking with plants. And maybe some people out there want to really get uh, educated and change their lifestyle and their diet. Many people know that I've suffered from acid reflux for years just because of the foods that I'm always introduced with, with filming and stuff like that. And to get my body on track, I'm always looking to go vegan again, uh, and it always sort of balances my health. Uh, and I have seen many of your videos. Um, a lot in particular are some cheese recipes and everything else. But uh, before we go into what you're doing and what you're cooking, uh, welcome to the show. And, and Anya, tell us a little bit about yourself and sort of how you got started on this whole venture uh, of this incredible vegan food craze. Thank you very much for having me, first of all. So it all basically started back in 2012. And being of a German background, I never, ever thought I would be calling myself a vegan. Mm. And... I actually, I've probably focused more on the plant-based side of things because I think still, even these days, even though veganism is growing in popularity, it still has some negative connotations with it as well when people don't know what it's all about. So I focus on the plant-based side. I have come to this way of eating from a health point of view. So back in 2012, I returned from a holiday to from Germany. I'd visited my family for three months and they had loaded me up with all the traditional German foods, all the meat, dairy, bread, right. cheeses. And I came back to Australia and I was feeling terrible. I just had no energy. I kept getting migraines and wasn't feeling good. So I took myself off to the doctor and he, he did a few tests and he said, oh, I can actually hear a heart murmur. And I thought, well, wow. what is a heart murmur? I didn't even know what it was at the time. And he said, look, I think you should go and get an ultrasound done of your heart. I just want to make sure that everything is okay. Oh, okay, I'll go and do what he says. So had the ultrasound done, went back to his office, and he said, oh, it's got a little bit of bad news. And I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> what's this yeah, bad right. news? And he said, you've actually got um, the start of a bulging aorta. I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> these are all weird words. I don't know what this means, but it's obviously issues with my heart. And I was quite scared. Like, I was 39 at the time. I had a 10-year-old son, and I thought, this isn't good. My grandmother on my mum's side, she had died at the age of 52 and from heart issues. And then my grandfather on my father's side, he had had full bypass operations and died of heart issues as well. So that kind of shocked me. So, so, and, they, and they had all had the same lifestyle, right? The dairy, the meat, maybe high salts, high fat, stuff like that. Yes, yes, definitely all the, everyone had the same diet. So I thought, well, what, what do I do from here? And so the doctor sent me to a cardiologist and the cardiologist basically sent me back home and said, look, you're too young, don't worry about it. Just keep going with what you're doing. And I said, well, there must be something I can change. Obviously, something has brought this on. Mm. And he said, no, no, oh, look, you can take tablets for the rest of your life, but don't worry about that. You don't really need it. Just go home. Right. <laughs> and I, I didn't like that answer. So I got on the internet and I did so much research and everything just kept pointing to a plant-based diet. And I thought, okay, well, what have I got to lose? It's just the food that I'm buying. I just swap a few things out and give it a try. So I did that, and within about four months... And how many years ago was that change uh, when, when you realized? In 2012. Got it. September 2012. And then within four months of changing my diet, which I pretty much changed overnight, I think I had a bit of salmon for about a week after I made this change, but then after that, I just went totally plant-based, whole food plant-based. Within four months, I had lost 50 pounds, which I wasn't even doing it for the weight loss, but after years of yo-yo dieting, that was just an added bonus. And I just felt so much better. My cholesterol went down. It was normal again for the first time in I don't know how many years. I had all this energy. Normally, I wasn't really one to exercise, but 
I had all this newfound energy, so I would go walking and sometimes get a little trot up and start running as well. So yeah, it was just amazing the change that I felt. Did it do anything for the for the heart condition? Did it improve it, or or I mean, obviously, it has it worsened it? But I didn't go back and get another ultrasound just because of the the attitude I'd gotten in the first place. And I thought, well, with all my blood tests improving, with the weight going down, with my cholesterol going back to normal, I thought, well, I'm definitely heading in the right great. direction. Yeah, you must feel really feeling, good, right? Feeling really good. Yes. Good. That's that. Yeah, a lot of energy and stuff like that. You know, it's amazing because I have a lot of people on the show that talk about healing with uh, plants and vegetables and stuff like that. And it's just, um, as you probably know, the Gerson therapy. I've had many of those people on the show as well. And and it's just truly amazing that once you start to eat healthy and different, you really take control of your health. Uh, I personally think that 99% of illnesses are related to what you eat in the environment. That's just me personally. But and people like you are a testament to this, you know, where, where you can change around your diet and your lifestyle and, and great things happen. So here you are, you change around um, your lifestyle, you're feeling better, and then you decide to, to tell the whole world about it. Bring us to the very first week that you decided to maybe launch some videos on YouTube and sort of get the whole world educated about it kind of started by accident because I had a cleaning lady at the time and she came in and she started seeing the change that was happening in me and she started digging around in my pantry going well what's this ingredient what's this she was quite intrigued and (laughs) so I explained everything and then she'd come back the next week so what are you eating now and what are you and what's this and and I got the same questions from obviously my parents they were a bit confused by it all and a bit <laughs> a bit iffy about what was happening and they kept asking me what do you eat and my dad was asking do you eat grass and <laughs> all these crazy things I was like, no dad I, I'm a foodie I love food how could I be eating grass that's <laughs> that's a crazy thing anyway so I thought I'm just going to show people what I eat show my friends and my family and I put a few videos up online on YouTube under the name of Cooking with Plants. And all of a sudden, I started getting all these people from all around the world watching what I was doing. And I thought, wow, there's more and more people around the world that need to know this information and they want to know this information. So basically from there, I just kept creating recipes and videos and I'd never, I'd enjoyed cooking in the past, but I wasn't really, I hadn't come from a chef background, I didn't have any right. formal training, but I loved using the creativity side of things. So I started to play around with different ingredients and like you mentioned earlier with the cheeses, making some nut-free cheeses as well with things like sweet potato, potatoes, yep. those types of things. Incredible. I mean, the recipes are spot on. I, I've tried them. Now, as far as, so now you start your YouTube channel and you say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, let me help the world. Let me, let me launch it out. When did it start to take off for you? When did you start to see like, wow, you know, my views are going up, uh, my likes, people are sharing it. People are asking me questions. When did, did, did it happen right away or did it sort of, or, or did it build up to where you thought, well, maybe people want to think they want to eat healthy, but really when it comes down to it, they want the fried chicken. <laughs> It was a lot of hard work for many, many years. It was a labor of love. So at the time I had other businesses I was running as well. So this was more of a hobby. And at the time, calling it a hobby, I was doing probably three new videos each and every week because I was just so passionate and I wanted to which is a lot a lot of people don't realize how many how much time and energy it takes to put one together and let alone three in one week. It was a lot of work and probably it wasn't until probably 2016 that I thought, okay, I'm going to take this seriously now and I'm going to release some cookbooks and start to to build this, um, not only to help people, but to actually make an income from it. So it was a lot of years of hard work. So now you're doing this full time now, right? Yes. Pretty much. So now talk to me about the cookbooks. How many cookbooks do you have out? I have four cookbooks. So three of them are oil-free. 
So I also cook oil free because again, the research when you actually dive deep into it shows that it's inflammatory. It inflames the lining of the arteries and it is not good for heart health. And given that heart health is the number one killer in the world, I am avoiding oil in my cooking. So I still really love flavor. I love good food. So I try to keep the recipes in my cookbook very simple oil free but full of flavor so there's a lot of variety there and so in addition to the cookbooks i now also coach people online i have a plant-based meal prep course which is also really good for people that aren't plant-based yet because it gives a lot of tips and tricks and even ways for people who live with meat eaters um, easy ways for them to cook for the entire family, not just for themselves and feeling <laughs> isolated in their cooking in right. in terms of cooking for themselves and then having to cook a separate meal. I have a lot of tips and tricks for people to make it easy on themselves. Interesting. And where can we find the cookbooks? Are they on Amazon? Are they uh, where, Go right to your website? They are on Amazon, but yes, my website is cookingwithplants.com. Nice and easy to remember. And 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 folks folks can go over there and all your cookbooks and stuff like that will be there for them to get, right? Yes, they are. And I've actually created a, a special link for your um, listeners. Yeah, Joel was saying that. Excellent. And, and you know, we'll have a link. I guess just send it to Joel. We'll have a link pop on the screen here so that uh, people can, can take a look at it. What, what is that offer? I don't, think, I don't think I'd actually sent it, but it's just cooking with plants forward slash taste. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and it's a masterclass, an oil-free masterclass, and it comes with an ebook that has some recipes, equipment that people can use, mm -hmm. and extra resources about oil-free, plant-based living and eating. Now, what about um, what about gluten? Do you do you still eat the gluten? Because I mean, leaving uh, you know, going a vegan lifestyle and gluten-free. Now that's rough. Now, do you do you still eat gluten? Personally, I still eat gluten. Not, I don't eat it so much. It's, mo it's I find it's mostly in bread, mm -hmm. and I don't eat that much bread. I prefer to have a, a sweet potato or some potatoes. But definitely, I still eat gluten. And I think a lot of people don't actually have a gluten intolerance or any issues with it. So unless you really have been diagnosed with celiac disease. For most people, it's actually not an issue. And I guess if you find that you are having digestive issues or other symptoms, just keep a track of what you're actually eating. And then if you do have an intolerance to gluten, then there are plenty of substitutes, especially these days. There's more and more products and different types of ingredients coming out that can be substituted. Interesting, interesting. So, what what are the plans for cooking with plants? Um, you know, you, you're you're now definitely, I'd say, in the forefront of uh, people who want to go vegan. Uh, the good thing about your videos is, and because I could say this personally, because I've tried many of them, everything that you do, and if you duplicate them, they come out okay. They come out really good. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that that are on this kick that sort of copy from other people and and the recipes don't always come out the same but but you're very consistent and another thing about your your channel uh, specifically is it looks like you're just having so much fun and you have so much passion you know when you're doing a recipe and I think that that's very important because it gets the viewers very engaged in in what you're doing and you know your love and passion for food come right through the screen on that um, what what's the future for your show What's the plans? Well, I, I think, well, like you were saying with my videos and the way I present myself, I don't tend to watch other people's <laughs> shows. I never have right from the start. It's just I'm sharing who I am and what I love. And right from the beginning, my tagline has been vegan made easy. So that is what I bring across in all of my recipes, all of my videos, all of my courses, in my coaching. And I constantly get people saying, oh, you're so authentic. Who, the person we see in front of us, that, that's who you are. And right. I, I'm not gonna go and watch someone else and copy them. I like doing what I do and sharing what I share. From here, it, it's creating more videos, it's creating more recipes 
so people can share it with their family and make tasty meals and also if, if people are on my newsletter they can reply to me and request certain recipes as well and just building those little mini courses different things that people can learn from home they can play the courses the videos in their kitchen and learn new things and I really break everything down and keep it very, very simple. And that's my goal to get as many people healthy as possible and incorporating more fruit and vegetables and having them taste great because at the end of the day, they give us energy, they make us feel good. And like I said, heart disease is the number one killer. Mm, so I, I want to help people to, to avoid that. It's food based. There might be 1% of people that it might be a genetic issue, but for everyone else, it's from the food that they're eating. And pretty much everyone knows someone that has heart issues or has died of a heart attack. So right. it's so important to, to eat healthy, but still have it tasty. No, absolutely. I mean, look, you know, let's let's just say I've never went vegan before and, you know, I've, I've got health issues and I want to get my life and health on the right track. Um, now we can all go to your videos and learn that, but what, what advice do you give to someone who might feel very overwhelmed from, you know, eating dairy their whole life, meat their whole life? I mean, they walk into Whole Foods and they're like, you know, 152 ingredients, what tastes good, you know, and, and you look, you could burn through not only a lot of food, but a lot of money trying out different products and it doesn't taste what you thought it could be and it could be very frustrating and the next thing you know, you're eating that hot dog again. So what advice can you give to people who want to get on this uh, healthy trend, this healthy lifestyle? Uh, and aside from, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a certain five videos that you have that you could point them through. But what advice do you give to them not to give up? And, and what's the first thing that they do? What, what do they cut out first? I think the easiest thing is just to make a list of what are your top three favorite meals, especially dinner. What's your, what are the top three dinners? And then try to find some plant-based versions of that. Google, whether it's lasagna, then Google plant-based lasagna, find one that you like, and you might not like the first one either. So just be persistent until you actually find one that you like and just replace those meals that you really love because if you're making this change and then you're you're missing out on the things that you actually love then it's going to make it even harder so start by making a list of the things that you absolutely love and replace those things and it could be that you start slowly and you start just by replacing your breakfast and i mean most people unless you're having bacon and eggs every day you know there's pancakes <laughs> you know there's the option of fruit and there's plant-based yogurts as well you could have different types of cereal or oatmeal there's so many different options for a breakfast or if you prefer savory which which i do there's things like mushrooms and baked beans and even tofu scramble which is like a an egg substitute so those types of things just finding replacements for what you love is the best way to start and then if you want to dive deeper things like meal prep courses etc they dive deep into those sorts of things and, and ways and steps of replacing those traditional meals that's great advice yeah so maybe start on just breakfast first i think that's good uh, you know uh, rather than just going cold turkey turkey no pun intended but you know rather than just yeah. stopping everything and getting so frustrated and and just saying to himself god you know this is never going to work let me just go back to you know the garbage food that i've been eating and you know I've, I've actually been part of documentaries and stuff like that just what they put in the foods i mean that it's it's just it's crazy it's 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 crime against humanity is what it is and what they're allowed to get away with putting it in the foods and i think what you're doing and and people like yourself really educating people and getting them to eat right uh is is just fantastic and we we applaud you for it what's the one video that you would say on there that is your favorite go-to that you said everybody's got to try this this recipe i mean for me it's the cheeses but the what, cheeses. what do you recommend that um is sort of your claim to fame definitely the cheeses and i guess when you're talking about changing from a traditional diet cheese and dairy seem to be the hardest things to give up and they're actually addictive they're 
designed for a baby cow to grow into a huge cow within a few months. So what is in the milk is actually addictive. It's like a drug. So that's why so many people, they'll happily give up the meat, but they always struggle with the dairy. So if you can use the recipes that I have for milk alternatives or especially the cheese alternatives, give them a try. And I know one of my first ones, it still has oil in it. So if you're making that initial transition, then maybe go for the one with the oil in it initially, just to get your taste buds used to it. And it's a matter of just training your taste buds as well. So if you don't like something initially, I think you have to taste something 17 times. And <laughs> if you don't like it within that time, then you definitely don't like it. But it's definitely that repetition and yeah, just try those different things. I know I have a recipe on there for a um, potato bake, a cheesy potato bake. So just substituting those rich and creamy types of textures, it can be really comforting and an easy way to switch across. Interesting. And another question that I have is, do you think people, because uh, there's always going to be people on, on both sides, you know, the, the, the meat eaters and the meat lovers and the dairy lovers, they'll tell people don't go vegan because you can't get the proper amino acids or, and stuff like that. Is there any truth to that? How, I mean, it's eight years now you're on this. I mean, you, you look healthy. Uh, are, are people really missing any nutritional uh, value from not eating meat, not eating from dairy? I think like any any diet, if you're eating, whether you're a meat eater or a plant-based eater, you need to balance what you're eating. I mean, if I was just eating processed junk food all day, I wouldn't be getting the vitamins and minerals that I should be getting. And that's the same for a traditional um, Western diet with meat and dairy, etc. So it's important to get a variety but if you're eating a variety of colorful fruits and vegetables and adding in some beans and legumes and people often worry about the the protein the protein but when you actually look at the, re the research protein is actually linked to a lot of cancer a lot of disease and our society is actually eating too much protein so most people don't even know how much protein they actually need. They just hear all these things from the news and the media and jump on this bandwagon of, I need more protein. And then, yeah, they haven't done the research. And do you actually need more protein? When was the last time you met someone that was protein deficient? As opposed to when was the last time you met someone that had cancer? So if you really dive deep into this research, <laughs> you start to see who's sponsoring a lot of these studies. Well, that's it. Behind the research. That's exactly and, right. Yeah, it's very, very eye opening. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and Jamie Oliver touched on that a lot too when he did his documentary. I mean, they're they're all hiding behind the big brands and, and pushing the, the the media. It's it's rough. It's a rough world. I I, I would say to anyone who uh, is looking to change around their life to definitely take a look at your channel, what you're doing, uh, even if it's for a short time. I mean, I find myself, you know, only because it's, it's what I do, I travel and I eat just about everything. But when I, I get to a point where I, I stop it, I'm like, okay, it's got to, now it's time to, to get back on the train here. And I feel better immediately, you know? But uh, what else uh, do you want to tell us before we leave? Um, yeah, just basically give it a try and like I said, just replace your favorite meals. Try a few different things, even if it's different sources. I have a lot of sources and sources really helps. Now, what's your favorite yeah. one? <laughs> we, we want to know what your uh, favorites are. I can't choose. There's so many. I know I up The pesto, up you did a really good pesto I saw, which is, which is really good. Pesto, yeah. And well, this week I actually just uploaded a couple of days ago a garlic sauce and I love garlic. And especially at the moment, I'm trying to boost my immune system. So I do love a little bit of garlic. Yeah, sandwich. let's talk about that real quick. You know, everybody is suffering from the coronavirus, but just in viruses in general, uh, what do you recommend to try to boost the uh, immune system? Is garlic, garlic is one option. What, what else do you have on the table? Oh, I mean, really any fruit and vegetables, berries are going to be good for you. All those types of things, having 
well, people just think oranges have vitamin C, but <laughs> things like red bell peppers have vitamin C. And if you just have a variety, think of the rainbow and look at the different vegetables. And maybe when you do go shopping, get two or three different colored vegetables and make sure that you're getting a variety of nutrients and really boosting your nutrients and your antioxidants and you'll notice, you'll notice when you start to eat more of these foods that you're actually getting the energy from those living foods. So transfer that energy into your body and you'll start to feel amazing. Excellent, excellent. Well, Anya, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, definitely a world-class show, ladies and gentlemen. Cooking with Plants, uh, you are a pioneer. And if you don't know that you've helped uh, many, hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of people, uh, you know, definitely you have, and uh, people should check out your work. Uh, we'll have a link to the description here, folks, so you can uh, take a look at uh, Anya's work, take a look at some of her videos if you haven't seen it. But, uh, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Be safe, and uh, give my regards to Australia. <laughs> I will indeed, and thanks again for having me. You got it. There are no rules in cooking. Taste this. Take care. <laughs>